Hi, I'm Victor Greta Jr. and this week on Coders, we'll be taking a look at a language called Erlang. What is it? Who's using it? Why are they using it? And where can you go to learn more? Telecom Careers, the number one global telecom and wireless job board. TelecomCareers.com So Erlang is a very important language for the telecom industry, but if you're not familiar with it, you may be missing out. In fact, there's a very popular messaging service or app out there that uses Erlang for its back end. One that's near, that nearly everyone is familiar with, but one is, which is associated more with dot-coms than telecoms. I'll tell you what that is after we explore what Erlang itself is. So what is Erlang? Well, it's a programming language, obviously. It's developed by Ericsson, uh, actually by Joe Armstrong, Robert Verding, and Mike Williams back in 1986. Erlang made its uh, open source debut in 1998, and it was created for some very specific communications needs. Of course, if you're familiar with Ericsson, you're familiar with the fact that they create a lot of telecommunications products. So the company needed a language that would support this distributed fault tolerant system. And it had to support code that can be swapped out while it was running. So in order for it to run concurrently and as simply as possible, external libraries were made sort of obsolete, although you can import other libraries. A lot of the processes were built into the language itself. So the language communicates with other processes by passing messages back and forth, whether they're phone calls controlled by a box or text messages with an emoji. Now, Erlang's real power is in its scalability. It's been said that it takes the least amount of engineers per user to maintain, and as I looked into it, I can see why. It's built to scale soft real-time systems that require maximum uptime, things like phone call systems. Fault tolerance is just one of the many examples where Erlang is suited to making pretty bulletproof applications. Now, Erlang does allow libraries to be imported, and there's plenty of middleware to develop systems using Erlang. Uh, OTP is a big one, of course, because it, it contains a lot of the programming patterns that allow the scalable crash-resistant code to happen in your programs, and more importantly, it allows Erlang to interface with hardware systems around telephony and other communications. One big thing about Erlang versus, say, Objective-C is that it isn't object-oriented programming. It's another model called concurrency-oriented programming. This mimics the real world, right? In object-oriented programming, you have this shared state concurrency. With shared state concurrency, you have the immutable state in which you have memory, and you can change that memory depending on what you need. And that works well if you have one process running. But as you get more processes running, it becomes unmanageable at that level. So sharing and modifying the same memory can make bad things happen. Erlang doesn't have mutable data structures, and it doesn't share that memory. So basically, it has no locks. It's easy to parallelize because it's built by design to be concurrent, and each process can simply be created and run on its own, and those take advantage of multi-core processors. So much more scalable than what you see with some other languages. And the world really is concurrent. You may have millions of phone calls at a time or millions of text messages happening at a time. And a lot of things are happening at the same time in real life. Our brains are great at processing in parallel, but most computer languages are not. And yet a group of people, let's think about a, a crowd of people, right? They have no shared state. Each person has their own memory, their own recollections. How do they communicate with each other? Well, they have to use messaging back and forth, whether it's pieces of paper or beams of light or whatever. That's how they actually pass messages back and forth. So Erlang is built on that same sort of model or that same idea that you have individual processes running and they're going to pass information back and forth through messaging versus sharing a pool of memory. So this is the essence of concurrency-oriented programming, updating a private state via messages. Of course, the language itself is pretty different. If you look at Java or C or Objective-C versus Erlang, you may notice some similarities in structure. It uses a pattern ma matching syntax, but it tends to be more compact than many popular high-level languages. So who uses it? 
In the beginning of this video, I teased a major player who used Erlang, and when I tell you who it is, it's going to make a lot more sense. This is a company known for a cross-platform messaging app that required a high degree of availability, uptime, and rock-solid reliability on the back end. In fact, this product was so good that Facebook bought them for a considerable amount of money. Not Instagram, but WhatsApp. It's a hugely popular messaging app that's been used around the world and across mobile platforms to send messages to people back and forth. Other uses of Erlang include a lot of startups, Ericsson, of course, uh, Yaws, which is an excellent web server designed for scalability and performance. There's even a 3D modeling program called Wings that uses it. But anyone in the know knows that if you want scalable, reliable code, Erlang is something to look into particularly when you're creating systems that require communications back and forth. Uh, Amazon uses it to implement a database. Yahoo uses it for its bookmarking, ser bookmarking service called Delicious. And T-Mobile uses it for SMS and authentication systems. So that's how reliable this thing is. And it should be obvious why Facebook bought WhatsApp. While the company is interested in boosting its code base and its user base, the understanding and implementation of Erlang is a compelling purchase for a company whose own messaging product can now reach a billion people. It wouldn't surprise me to discover Facebook uses Erlang in more than just WhatsApp these days. So why use it? Well, according to one of the creators, Joe Armstrong, yes, Erlang is used all over the world in high-tech projects where reliability counts. The Erlang flagship flagship project built by Ericsson, the Swedish telecom company, is the AXD301. This has over 2 million lines of Erlang. The AXD301 has achieved a 9.9's reliability. That's 99.9999999% reliability. So in context, it's 5 9's is reckoned to be good because that's 5.2 minutes of downtime per year seven nines is almost unachievable and they managed to get nine nines that's pretty darn good that's a pretty good reason right there reliability is a rock bed of erlang but the scalability and the efficiency of the code are a few others for example here's a block of erlang that uses recursion to count to 10. now this gives you a little bit of an idea of what the syntax looks like in erlang Better still, Erlang's support for distributed processes is what gives it such power and reliability. Here's an example of how easy it is to implement this. Now you may be wondering how Erlang actually gives commands to hardware, and that's handled when the VM bytecode is converted to threaded code at load time. Included is a native code compiler for almost all platforms, and they have a high-performance Erlang project at Uppsala University that they work on this. And HIPE, or HYPE, was integrated into the open-source Erlang and OTP system. Um, so that interpreter, compiler, protocols, all those libraries are all included in that. So now the question is, where can you learn Erlang? And I do encourage you to at least take a look at Erlang. Well, one of the earliest videos about Erlang is on YouTube, and it's a great introduction if it's a little dated. Here's a quick example. And as we can see by the screen, things are starting to go wrong. We see here that something has gone wrong. An error has recurred. Here is the original error, which caused all the subsequent errors. It also caused those parts of the system taking part in that error to automatically restart themselves. For example, here is one of the telephones that took part in the call which crashed and was subsequently restarted automatically by the system. We shall now try and find out what caused the original error. We see that something was undefined. We also see that it was the function mmulti in the module feature which was undefined. So that's called Erlang the Movie, and it gives you an idea of why Erlang was created, and it definitely shows you sort of how Erlang is used in the workplace. I encourage you to watch the rest of the video when you get a chance, but uh, of course today there are many other uses besides just a phone system, right? And telecom, while that's bedrock of what Erlang is used for, Erlang itself is booming in popularity as software continues to innovate up and down the stack. 
Of course, Erlang is now open source, so there are a few other ebooks and resources out there to get you started. You can freely download Erlang from Erlang.org and give it a spin yourself. You can download a free copy of Learn You Some Erlang for Great Good by Fred Herbert over on LearnYouSomeErlang.com. Plus, there's an Erlang user conference each year, and you can find out more on Erlang-Factory.com. You can also look for local classroom-driven study at places like the Iron Yard, although classes on Erlang tend to be a little more boutique, so call and see what's available. That's actually a huge selling point, if you recall. Erlang can be supported, coded, and deployed by a very small number of engineers, especially when you consider the number of users those engineers are supporting. That efficient code plus the reliability and scalability and overall availability has led to a surge in Erlang's popularity and its use, and it's worth a look if you're needing what special features it has to offer. Next time we'll talk to a developer actually using Erlang and hear some stories about what it's like to use it in the real world. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next time. Coders is a production of RCR TV News. To reach Victor Agreta Jr. or to suggest a show topic for coders, you can reach him on Twitter at SuperPixels. For all the latest news on wireless code and the whole world of wireless, check out rcrwireless.com.